Many experiments have been conducted that definitively prove the existence of superposition. For example, recruits the help of light filters, screens that selectively block light, such as those found in polarized sunglasses or camera lenses. Most of the light we see around us is a combination of many different waves coming from the sun and other sources. The peaks and valleys of these waves are rotated in different directions at once. In other words, the light is in a superposition of these different polarized states. Graphics showing polarized light, waveforms at different angles on an axis polarization of light credit. Lance Hayashida for Caltech Science Exchanges, light waves interact with their surroundings. Their properties change. Light that reflects off of the surface of a lake or snow-covered ground will be more likely to be polarized horizontally. If this light then encounters a filter that permits only vertically polarized light to pass through, the reflection will be blocked. This is how polarized sunglasses filter out the glare from reflective surfaces on a bright day. Superposition becomes apparent when we arrange more than one filter in different ways to tease out additional properties of light. Light that passes through a horizontal filter will have a 100% chance of passing through a second horizontal filter, i.e. all of it will pass through. If the second filter is gradually rotated toward a vertical orientation, the chance of the light passing through both filters steadily decreases. Half of the light will pass through when the filter reaches the diagonal 45 degrees, and no light will pass through when the filter is vertical. If superposition did not exist, light would be completely blocked as soon as the second filter was rotated by even a fraction of a degree because all of the light that went through the first filter woo, would be strictly horizontally polarized. Illustration of light going through a horizontal filter and being blocked by a vertical filter No light passes through a horizontal filter followed by a vertical filter. Credit. Lance Hayashida for Caltech Science Exchanger Prisley. Adding a diagonal filter between the horizontal and vertical filters allows some light to go all the way through the system. This is also a result of superposition. The new filter will permit 50% of the light coming through the horizontal filter to pass. Then, because the new filter is also diagonal relative to the vertical filter, the vertical filter will permit 50% of the light to pass through. The Tusla experiment and one mystery of quantum mechanics Richard Feynman said that the Tusla experiment contains the one mystery of quantum mechanics. I will take just this one experiment, which has been designed to contain all of the mystery of quantum mechanics. To put you up against the paradoxes and mysteries and peculiarities of nature 100%, any other situation in quantum mechanics, it turns out, can always be explained by saying, you remember the case of the experiment with the two holes? It's the same thing, the character of physical law. Chapter 6, we will show that the one mystery of quantum mechanics is how mere probabilities can causally control statistically the positions of material particles, how material information can affect the material world. This remains a deep metaphysical mystery. The Tusla experiment was until recent years for the most part a thought experiment, since it is difficult to build an inexpensive demonstration. But its predictions have been verified in many ways since the 1960s, primarily with electrons. Recently, extremely sensitive CCDs used in photography have been used to collect single photon events, establishing experimentally everything that Albert Einstein imagined, merely by thinking about it as early as 1905. Light at the yellow dot slowly disappears as the second slit opens. Adding light causes some light to disappear. The Tusla experiment demonstrates better than any other experiment that a quantum wave function's psi is a probability amplitude that can interfere with itself, producing places where the probability psi to the square of the absolute value of the complex probability amplitude of finding a quantum particle is actually zero. Perhaps the most non-intuitive aspect of the two-slit experiment is when we first note the pattern of light on the screen with just one slit open, then open the second slit, emitting more light into the experiment, and observe that some places on the screen where there was visible light through on slit have now gone dark. And this happens even when we are emitting only one particle of light at a time. How Feynman asked, can that single particle know that two slits are open? Light waves are often compared to water waves, as are quantum probability waves, but this latter is a serious error. Water waves and light waves, as well as sound waves, contain something substantial like matter or energy. But quantum waves are just abstract information, mathematical possibilities. As Paul Dirac tells us, quantum wave functions are not substances. Young's 1802 drawing of wave interference what are waves in a ponder, quantum, and the two-slow experiment, 
The cancellation of crusts and troughs in the motion of water and other waves creates high and low points in water waves that have the same shape as bright and dark areas found in the fringes of light at the sharp edges of an object. These interference patterns were predicted to occur in double slit experiments by Thomas Young in the early 19th century. The two-slit experiment is thought to demonstrate the famous collapse of the wave function or reduction of the wave packet, which show an inherent probabilistic element in quantum mechanics that is irreducibly ontological, and nothing like the epistemological indeterminacy, human ignorance, and classical statistical physics. We shall see below that the idea of the light wave collapsing instantaneously to become a particle was first seen by Einstein in 1905. This is a mistake, one still widely taught. Note that the probability amplitude psi is pure information. It is neither matter nor energy. When a wave function collapses or goes through both slits in this dazzling experiment, nothing material or energetic is traveling faster than the speed of light or going through both slits. We argue that the particle of matter or energy always goes through just one slit, although the popular Copenhagen interpretation of physics claims we cannot know the particle path that a path does not even exist until we make a measurement, that the particle may be in more than one place at the same time, and other similar nonsense that deeply bothered Einstein as he hoped for an objective reality independent of human observers. David Bohm's pilot wave theory agrees that an objectively real particle travels through one slit, guided by its pilot wave, which travels through both a large number of panpsychists, some philosophers, and some scientists believe that the mind of a conscious observer is needed to cause the collapse of the wave function. There's something similar going on in the einstein podolsky rosen thought experiments, where a measurement of a particular spin component of one particle means that the other particle now has the exact opposite value of its same spin component to conserve total spin zero. Nothing physical matter or energy is transmitted to the other entangled particle. The idea that an immaterial bit of information is teleported to the other particle is also mistaken. The anti-parallel spins are created together simultaneously, in a special frame of reference. There is no violation of relativity. We shall show that it is conservation of angular momentum or of spin that makes the state of the coherently entangled second particle determinate, however far away it might be after the measurement. In the two-slit experiment, just as in the Derrick three polarizers experiment, the critical case to consider is just one photon or electron at a time in the experiment. With one particle at a time, whether photon or electron, the quantum object is mistakenly described as interfering with itself when interference is never seen in a single event. Interference only shows up in the statistics of large numbers of experiments. Even in the one-slit case, interference fringes are visible when large numbers of particles are present, although this is rarely described in the context of the two-slit quantum mystery. It is the fundamental relation between a particle and the associated wave that controls the particle's probable location that raises the local reality question first seen in 1905 and described in 1909 by Albert Einstein. 30 years later, the EPR paper and Erwin Schrodinger's insights into the wave function of two entangled particles first convinced physicists that there was a deep problem. It was not for another 30 years that John Stuart Bell in 1964 imagined an experimental test that could confirm or deny quantum mechanics. Ironically, the goal of Bell's theorem was to invalidate the non-intuitive aspects of quantum mechanics and restore Einstein's hope for a more deterministic picture of an objective reality at, or perhaps even underlying below, the microscopic level of quantum physics. At about the same time, in his famous lectures on physics at Caltech and the Messenger lectures at Cornell, Richard Feynman described the two-slit experiment as demonstrating what he claimed is the only mystery of quantum mechanics. We can thus begin the discussion of the two-slit experiment with a section from Feynman's sixth Messenger lecture entitled Probability and Uncertainty. We provide the complete video and text of the lecture on this page in a version starting with Feynman's provocative statement that no one understands quantum mechanics below. Open the text of the lecture in a new window so you can read along with the video. How? Feynman asks. Can a single particle go through both slits? Our answer in David Bohm's is that each particle goes the one slit, conserving matter and energy. The particle always goes through a single slit. A particle cannot be divided and into places at the same time. It is the wave function that interferes with itself and the highly localized particle cannot be identified with the wave widely distributed in space. The wave function psi is determined by solving the Schrodinger equation given the boundary conditions of the measuring apparatus, the container. 
we will see that the thing that goes through both slits is only immaterial information. The probability amplitude wave function psi t if we solve the time-dependent Schrodinger equation. The immaterial wave function exerts a causal influence over the particles, one that we can justifiably call mysterious. It results in the statistics of many experiments agreeing with the quantum mechanical predictions, with increasing accuracy as we increase the number of identical experiments. It is this influence, no ordinary force, that is Feynman's only mystery in quantum mechanics. Let's look first at the one slit case. We prepare a slit that is about the same size as the wavelength of the light in order to see the Fraunhofer diffraction effects most clearly. Parallel waves from a distant source fall on the slit from below. The diagram shows that the wave from the left edge of the slit interferes with the one from the right edge. If the slit width is d and the photon wavelength is lambda at an angle alpha, approximately equals lambda to d, there will be destructive interference at an angle alpha approximately equals lambda d. There is constructive interference, which shows up as the fanning out of lightning patterns in the interfering waves in the illustration. The light constructive interference leads toward the peaks in the interference pattern.